Well, thank you for having me here. I'm glad to be here for this year. Um, so I'm going to be talking about some, uh, basically some functors into graded abelian groups that are some refinements of uh, integral and cohomology contains the data of a smooth form. So uh, first, basically a differential cohomology functor is a, so is if, I'm going to explain this diagram, is, one that, is that thing sitting right in the center in the uh, pink chalk. So top long exact sequence, these are, these are uh, natural transformations of graded abelian groups, uh, in graded abelian groups uh, between these functors from, we're taking the category of smooth manifolds in the graded abelian groups, and these are just ordinary cohomology functors. So that top exact sequence is just given coefficients, short exact sequence, gives you a long exact sequence, uh, gives, you, gives you a short exact sequence in the uh, cochain complexes, gives you a long exact sequence in the cohomology period. So pretty straightforward. But the neat thing is that when you apply this to manifolds, we all know that real cohomology is computed by this Durham cohomology. We, we can use differential forms. So I want to define what, what is that omega, those omegas are all differential forms. What is the omega z? So if I take a, you know, I could ask what closed forms when I take their Durham class come from an integral class. It turns out that those are the closed forms with integral periods. So those are closed forms that when you integrate them over cycles that are built out of manifolds, you always get an integer. So those are precisely the things you get that uh, represent integral classes. So I can take those forms, closed forms with integral periods, include them into all forms, and then take the quotient. Okay, and uh, because these, uh, because all exact forms are included in here, that means that actually I can give this and this zero differentials, and I still have a short exact sequence of chain complexes. So that gives me a long, long exact sequence in their uh, homologies, and that's what I have here. The homology of this is a regular Durham cohomology, and these have no differentials, so they stay the same under taking homology. And also notice that when you apply the snake lemma here, that you use the differential inside of here. So this co-boundary is essentially given by D. So I take a representative, I take forms modulo these forms of integral periods, take D of it, that gives me a form there. And this is given by, you know, the box stein given from that exact sequence. Okay, and so, so the outer white chalk diagram is sort of classical given groups and classical natural transformations that we're all familiar with. And a differential cohomology theory in this context, at least for ordinary integral cohomology, is going to be a functor, h hat, with its integrated abelian groups, uh, which comes equipped with four natural transformations into, as indicated, so into the integral period uh, forms and the integral cohomology, and has four na two natural transformations from the R mod Z coefficient cohomology and these quotient forms. And we want the diagonal sequences to be exact. We require the diagonal sequences to be exact. And we require all four of these cells we have here to commute. And that's a differential cohomology theory. So it contains both an integral class and a form class that when you map them into real cohomology agree. But it's more than that. You actually have something here going in that's in the kernel of both of those things. OK, so that's nice. But uh, are there any such things? And so the original definition of uh, was given for what say is uh, differential characters given by Simons and Shigers back in the Shiger back in the seventies. So it's given by you take homomorphisms from the k minus one cycles into R mod Z such that there's some closed form, well, just some form, there exists some form such that when I apply the, this homomorphism to a boundary of something, it's given by integrating that form over whatever that something I took the boundary of and reducing mod z. So these are, these are the ordinary differential characters. 
And then there were several other models that were of, of functors that fit into diagrams like this that were eventually discovered, and they were all eventually shown to be isomorphic to this. There's many different names on them, a whole host of them. And so in 2008, Simons and Sullivan proved that actually any functor that fits into a diagram like this is going to be uh, naturally isomorphic to these characters. And in such a way that's compatible with all four of these natural transformations. So it's not just that they're isomorphic, naturally isomorphic as groups. In a way, the natural isomorphism commutes with all these. All the four of the triangles you get out of that, such a thing would commute as well. Okay, and so this turns, oh, for this one, so if you want to see where this map here comes from, that delta one map is given, basically, you can show that this form is, for any such homomorphism that has such a form, the form is unique, it's closed, and it will have integral period. So this form right here is precisely what that delta one map is. Uh, describing the map going integral cohomology is a little more involved. But it's pretty elementary, though. Okay, uh, so they're all basically look like differential characters. That's great. So instead of having a whole host of different possibilities, now we only have one. Okay, but so why are these things interesting at all? Um, well, it turns out that if you're thinking about physics and Maxwell theory, uh, Normally, in, in classical Maxwell theory, you have a closed form, not necessarily with integral period, that represents your current, uh, the current of the, or the charge density, however you want to think of it. And if you quantize it, you want it to be a form, you want it to be this a form with integral period. That's the, sort of the quantization condition. But these don't behave very nicely with respect to gluing. They're not local in the physics term, of the, or what a uh, topologist would say is you can't glue them. If you have two forms of integral period on two disjoint pieces of some manifold, and try to glue them together, you don't necessarily get something with integral periods when you try to glue them. So to remedy that, they have to include this data of this, of this actual cohomology class where you can glue things together. And so this inherits that from these two pieces, these differential cohomology classes. Um, if I have two classes that agree on some intersection, I can glue them together and get a class defined on the whole space. Um, so it's some sort of like a weak sheaf property, something. And uh, so these end up being sort of the natural home for your uh, fields in your B fields, at least, in uh, quantized Maxwell theory, end up sort of living in this space from a certain point of view. So that means that, uh, so then if you want to move to more complicated physics, apparently in uh, some, sort of, some sorts of supersymmetric string theory, um, the B fields also end up living in something like this as well. You have to replace this inter integral cohomology with some different, more generalized cohomology theory. And you still have an a coefficient long exact sequence, and you can still make some different definition of what you have here. You, can't, you don't have a Durham isomorphism anymore, but what you do have is that if you take differential forms with values in some graded vector space that's related to this integral cohomology theory, you do get an isomorphism. You can make an alternate definition of the outside, and you can ask for all that. Okay, and so these were originally, this original example was constructed of such a, something like a character. I guess not, the definition is very, very different, but some sort of prototypical functor that sits in the middle there that has natural transformations into the corresponding generalized cohomology theory and corresponding generalized forms with integral periods, whatever that means in that context. And, you know, you can, and they're useful for physics in that sense. And so the question you could ask is, you know, are these all going to be uh, isomorphic? And so, So all we have, sorry, interesting theorem. So if you have We have a generalized cohomology theory. Such that uh, such that the odd coefficients of the theory tensor with Q vanish. Then the corresponding corresponding differential cohomology theory is 
is unique. Or rather, any differential cohomology theory cor corresponding to that up to a natural isomorphism can use all the pieces. Well, actually, they, they have a different, a slightly different diagram where there's no R mod Z thing. But anyway, technical detail. Basically, they're all the same. And then, uh, so I have a result. We also have a result that uh, if you have a finitely generated. In each degree, so if you if you also have a final, all you need is should be finally generated in each degree. But there's a little proviso, this little footnote here, is that I have to, the, the price I pay for that is I have to work in a bigger category. So So we can have, instead of just smooth manifolds with uh, corners, which is what the setting for this was originally was, or smooth manifolds just by themselves, I work in some bigger category, which I define axiomatically. I give, I need to have certain, uh, basically sufficiently, I need to have sufficiently many co-limits is the basic thing it needs to have. Um, and then you can sort of build representing spaces for your cohomology theory in this category. You can sort of push forward the program that they set out originally. Yes? Yeah, is yeah. So yeah, I was thinking yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, no, we need actually four tensor in here. So otherwise, which, so it probably probably could work in that setting too. Okay. So yeah. so these things show up in physics. They're actually only one of them. It's very nice, and so it turns out the. Um, this lattice you get is going to be not so. It's this these forms you're going to have for when I choose some generalized cohomology theory. They're going to be some product of forms because when I take some generalized cohomology theory and take it with R coefficients, it splits into a product, and so I have a corresponding product of uh, uh, forms that live there. And so the lattice you get in there is some sort of non-trivial lattice that shows up uh, from this in, this quantization condition. So it's not just the regular product of lattices that you would have from the uh, integral. Uh, from, so I don't just get forms with integral periods sitting inside of a bunch of products. I have some sort of different lattice that lives there. So, well, um, any other questions? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much.